The Night House is the best horror movie I have seen since Hereditary. It came out last year. I didn't hear any hype for it. And after watching it, uh, just because my girlfriend picked it out on Amazon Prime, I was stunned at how good this was. I don't compare it to Hereditary just for hype reasons alone though, while it is in that category of, of how good it is in my opinion. Uh, there are also a lot of parallels between the two in terms of tackling grief and some other elements. Uh, I will go spoiler free at first and just talk about a lot of the elements of the movie. Um, and then there'll be a little bit of a spoiler section at the end where I can just react to some of the things that were in this movie. Now, one of the reasons that I talk about the parallels between this and Hereditary is actually the scores on Rotten Tomato. You can see pretty universal critic acclaim and then the audiences who are lagging behind. And if anyone has seen Hereditary and likes it, then you understand pretty quickly why the unwashed masses do not like it. If you go through any of these reviews, almost all of them are talking about it's a little slow and like the ending I didn't get it uh I can't believe people don't get the endings of these movies. I think they're pretty straightforward, all things considered. And a lot of it about being slow is just such a weak criticism of something in my mind when it's a bit of a character study and you're looking at like, in Hereditary's case, a family unit and stuff like that. Being slow and taking its time is not the same thing as being boring. And if you think anything that goes slow is just outright bad and you're using it as an actual criticism and not just like a talking point, like, oh, it's a slow burn movie, then I just it blows my mind. The other thing I'll say is that I don't even necessarily agree with slow you know there's stuff constantly happening new bits of information coming out like it's just not an action movie i think there's a lot of people who watch horror movies and think that they should all be slashers or like the things where like people are dying every 10 minutes evil dies tonight and th that's what horror is but i think a lot of the psychological horror a lot of the ones that are also more character driven horrors are more in this vein and i think a lot of people just see a horror movie and go, oh, this looks like it'll be fun. And then it's, you know, it's something more than that. And Hereditary was like that. You saw that reflected in the audience scores. Same thing here. A really brief synopsis of the story without spoilers. Um, a woman is dealing with the suicide of her husband. Uh, some weird stuff starts happening around her house. It might be her grief. It might be her drinking. It might be something else. Uh, kind of sounds run of the mill at first, but very quickly, I think it establishes itself as doing some unique things with that. I'll get into those unique things a little bit when I talk plot, but I wanna start with character because I love the main character and most of the characters in this. She is just fucking awesome. The actual actress does a great job uh, herself of going through all the different kind of emotions, but the way the character is written is so blunt and straightforward and slightly sarcastic and like a little unhinged with a drinking problem um, and is not afraid to make other people feel uncomfortable. There's a lot of scenes where she is just like going after people a little bit. She's just a fun to watch because it's not like a monotone performance. Like even in scenes where other characters just be like scared, sometimes she's a little bit more aggressive or like challenging the things going on around her. She's going outside in scenes where me and my girlfriend both like, don't go out don't go out, you know, and not like in a stupid way, but just like I wouldn't have, have the guts to go outside and start following some of these things around. She's a really refreshing lead character in, in a movie, uh, a horror movie like this. The friend is also great. It's someone who actually cares about her, wants to help her, is not totally discrediting her opinions, but you know, being like, hey, some stuff is happening. I should say experiences. Very often those, those support characters are like, oh, what, something weird happened at your house? That's just all in your head, you silly goose. She does do that on occasion, but she also really does love her and support her and that's kind of one of the themes about how this is grief and loss and how you might need to lean on other people sometimes and I thought that was all very well done. Sound design was good. I'm listening at home. I don't really have an insane speaker system so I, I can't comment on whether or not you know, it really pops or doesn't. But I, I thought they did a good job of, of coordinating the, the jump scares with it and not. I mean, there are some jump scares. There's also just some straight horror and, and elements like that where it's unnerving. It really does a good job of blending all those different styles. There are tense scenes, unnerving scenes, things that you're learning that and like could happen in real life that you're like not down with, like learning things about your partner posthumous, pos posthumously, pos posthumously, whatever. Like some of those scary elements are very realistic possibilities. One of the best things about The Night House is actually the cinematography slash visual effects that they do in this movie. And another thing that makes it a pretty good comparison with Hereditary, which was also very artfully done. 
Um, you know, with grief loss being a huge part of the story, there are a lot of shots with empty space where, you know, you'll get a, what would normally be a double shot or a shot over someone's shoulder and it would be framing the other person, but it's vacant now because this person is no longer here. So a lot of very intelligent framing for the cinematography. The visual effects are what really just steals the cake here. I mean, they use like kind of an optical illusion that straddles the line between practical effect and special effect. And like sometimes like you're like, am I seeing this the way like your the characters like, am I seeing this correctly? And then something will happen and you'll be like, whoa, the visual effects were, were just incredible. There are a number of times where I thought the the visualization of what this horror element is was very uniquely done and, and something that I hadn't really seen before. On to the plot. A lot of the times in horror movies, there's basically like what the character thinks it is, who's going through some stuff so that everyone can discredit. And then like what the normal people think, either they're crazy or it's this paranormal activity. And that's really the two things that you're kind of usually bouncing between. And then sometimes there's a twist at the third point at near the end of the movie, there'll be the third options revealed of what it really is. In Scream, which I, I love, it's one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. The question is simply, who is the killer? And that's pretty much all there is to it. You're tracking these different details of who it could be and it's, it's a whodunit. What works so well with this is that there's constantly new plot elements being introduced because it's not just potentially paranormal things. It's also information that she's learning about her husband now that he's dead. And so there's also this little bit of an information mystery plot line that's going on that you're also kind of uncovering during these jump stairs and these other things that might be going on. A lot of the times the mystery feels core to the paranormal. But here, there just feels like there's more balls in the air that it's juggling, which is why it didn't feel slow paced to me is because there's always something new and you're wondering how is all this gonna tie together? I have some minor nitpicks, uh, but those really go into the spoiler category. People who said the ending was bad, I would just say probably didn't get it or I don't know what they wanted. I, I didn't hear a single criticism that I could find that made me reevaluate my own opinion of it. I would give this movie a nine out of 10. If you're a fan of horror, you're probably really gonna love it. If a Hereditary is a movie that you think is amazing, you'll probably think this one is amazing too. I do think Hereditary is a little bit better, but it, it is in that ballpark. And I, I can safely encourage anyone who is looking for a good horror movie to watch this weekend, pop this one in. Now let's get into some of these spoiler topics. First off, the husband is such an asshole. I can't quite tell if the movie was condemning him or not. I didn't really feel like they had space to go over that because once the full revelation of what he was doing hits us in the end, there's too many other things going on that we didn't have kind of the wife reflect. The twist that reveals he's murdering other random innocent women to protect his wife, but he's not telling his wife that this is going on. He's also having sex with them. And so like, I don't think any person would want their partner doing that on their behalf. I don't see how you can really defend that. Uh, he's obviously struggling from nothing. Um, nothing, if you know what I'm talking about from watching it. He's still a piece of shit though. Like even if you are in some kind of psychologically weird spot, uh, and I don't think the movie sided with him, but it didn't really condemn him either. It was kind of swept under the rug of like, yeah, he killed a bunch of people, but he was doing it for his wife and he had good reasons for it. But like, still this guy is, pr it's probably better off that he's not alive. That said, the ending I loved. I mean, God, that like weird binding position that they all ended up in, the way nothing like warped reality around him and like the geometry and like slid in and like you could see through layers of the, of the architecture as he did that. It gave this feeling of an, an extra dimensional being way better than like most demon things do or when they just go with possession and it doesn't have its own body. Like here, it didn't have its own body, but it still occupied space in a very interesting way. I think this is probably the most creative portrayal of demon slash extra dimensional that, that I've ever seen. It's much more of a Lovecraftian horror vibe. Is it the God of Death? Who, who knows? I love the moons, two eyes in the sky, the way the reflection happens into the, the dream world. You know, anytime she gets closer to losing consciousness, which is closer to death, sleep is the cousin of death. If you've ever heard that saying, like that's when she falls under more power of it. You know, like all of that was just so good for me. And the people who didn't get the ending, I assume it's the scene where she gets her head slammed against the thing and wakes up in, in the reverse house. And you think that's happening in the real world, but it's not, it's happening in the dream world because she's been knocked unconscious. So now she can be manipulated more powerfully by nothing. I think it all made sense to me. It tied up very nicely. And then of course the, the ending about relying on friends when you're going through grief and loss, it's her friend who pulls her out of this dream world state that she's in and saves her from the same fate as her husband. If you like this video, let me know, like, comment, and subscribe down below. I'll be doing a lot more reviews of just random movies that I watch. I am constantly watching movies that 
most people have never heard of. If you've seen it, you know, like let me know what you think in the comments below, your own opinion of the movie. I, I don't know if I'm the only one. I, I really haven't seen anyone I know talk about this. So maybe I'm just like off in cuckoo land who thinks it's amazing and no one else does.